this past year, the downtown core went wireless from the lakefront to Bloor, from church to Spadina. You can just turn on your laptop and magically be connected to the internet if you have an existing wireless connection. Toronto did this to remain technologically competitive to other cities, which have recently done the same thing, like San Francisco and Chicago. If there was any protest to making this happen, it wasn't reported, certainly not with the fanfare and attention that the merits of this decision of this new plan were getting from the local media. After all, who doesn't want to be online all the time and for a limited time at no cost? If you were paying attention over the past year, you would have noticed these funny, shorter-than-usual, flat-faced antennas springing up on the tops of virtually every building on every main street corner in the core, all balancing our internet and cell phone signals off each other in an effort to provide us with reception at any given moment and our service providers with profit. Of course, the reality is that Rogers is still incapable of providing a signal in the middle of the day on the corner of Young and King Streets on a regular basis, but this is what they sell us in their advertising. Service. Second and none. Indeed. No one seems to talk much about the radiation, only in passing, really. If you try to engage someone in a serious conversation on the matter, I'm always a little surprised to see just how much fear is present, lurking just below the surface on this scary and little understood phenomenon. When you start to think about it, and the enormity of it hits you, it's hard to turn it off again. Go. Go and search on Google all the people who have gotten brain tumors and know in their heart of hearts it was for talking for 1,200 minutes a month on those gargantuan old Motorola's from the late 80s to the mid-90s. Look at all the people still experiencing this, people sensitive enough to the radiation that they can feel it when the phone is on and pressed against their heads, getting brain tumors just above the ear on the side. They hold the phone right where the antenna comes out and the signal is being transmitted from the tower. Look at the rise of cases of testicular cancer in young men, men who inherently walk around all day long with their cell phones in their jeans front pocket. The rising breast cancer where women are encouraged to always have their cell phone in their breast pocket or shoulder bag which they hold up in their armpit. Look at the people complaining of a syndrome related to these transmission towers where they experience increased and chronic body pain, muscle weakness, headaches, dizziness and being generally unwell. You can't look. As soon as you do, you realize you're swimming in it. It's not a matter of just giving up your cell phone. Even before the wireless grid was unveiled in Toronto, you could open up your wireless-enabled laptop anywhere downtown and find five or six wireless networks available for you to connect to. If you talk on a cordless phone, you can often pick up other people's signals in the same neighborhood and eavesdrop on their calls. If you look around you at any given moment nowadays, almost everyone you see will have an activated cell phone, Blackberry, iPod, laptop, or video game somewhere on their person. You can't get away from it. The invisible poison rays of radiation are bouncing off and around and through you every minute of every day you spend in a first world urban setting in our modern society. The unnatural light and heat of these devices is bombarding you with additional and different radiation. The way our normal physiology unfolds is being compromised by all of this and it's showing up in the health of our people. There is a justice issue involved in the nightmare of systematic radiation poison we are facing here in our cities. The first problem is exactly who the hardest hit victims are. They are not, as you might initially imagine, the people indulging in the activities that require the constant bombardment of radiation to begin with. If you look at a map of downtown Toronto and square off the grid, you will see who really lives within it. On the eastern border, Church Street. Densely populated, yes, but not by a majority of internet-savvy, technology-dependent wireless junkies, more like heroin junkies, low-income workers, mostly living and working within the grid of our service industries, students of programs at Ryerson, George Brown, and other schools in the area. Children. The neighborhood. The North Border. Floor Street from Church to Spadina, not so many people living in this area. The majority who are here all the time are students, homeless people, and condo owners. Working in the area, corporate, retail, service, and several high-end and medium-run hotels. The western border, Spadina Avenue, runs south down through Chinatown. Hundreds of thousands of immigrants, market workers, construction, students, artists, and social services all operating out of this area. Often never leaving the neighborhood, needing email access perhaps, but not immediate wireless access 24 hours a day. On the south border, the lakefront, besides the hundreds of homeless people affected, most of the people who actually live in this area are now the ones requiring this change in city operations, this constant access to wireless networks. But 
There are still thousands more in this incredibly densely populated city who have no idea what they are living in.